the Lord a hand praise in this place. Amen. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be under my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Amen. God is an awesome God. Well, he ain't nobody sing about him. God is an awesome God. Maybe he ain't awesome to you, but he is an awesome God to me and my family, amen, because he woke me up this morning, amen. Maybe he didn't wake you up this morning, but he started me on my way and gave me a right mind. Some of you don't know that until you get mental illness. Okay, I'm trying to tell you what God would do for you, amen. He's that kind of God. He loved you before you first loved him. The Bible says, yet while we were sinner." Christ died, amen, and we thank God for being in the house of the Lord, amen, on this day, somebody say this day, because we don't know what tomorrow is going to hold, we look at the news and we see, we see Russia invading Ukraine, but we don't know what's next on the list, okay, see the inter intercessors ain't even praying no more, the church is in such a disarray, we, we fighting over stuff that's not even trivial, Okay, so, so that's why God says, you know, he's not moving right now because you ain't moving. He says, first ye seek the kingdom of God and all his what? And then what? We want the things before the seeking. Hmm. We want the things before we knock and it shall be, it, the door shall be open. But the day is feeding time. Somebody says feeding time. Uh, you know, I always found out about my dog Harley. He couldn't, you couldn't make him eat if he wasn't ready to eat. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all dogs eat everything, but I had a little finicky puppy, you know. He would only eat those things that he wanted at that time. So what I do was take it back up and bring it to him tomorrow. <laughs> he wouldn't eat that day. By by day three, <laughs> he didn't care if it was a bowl of water. He was lapping it up, amen. That's why the word never gets old. I have people who have the daily bread and say, Pastor, I, I don't want to read it because the data expired. But I say, but the word didn't. It may be January, February, and March, and then you might be reading, you might be reading it the year prior, but the word in it is still too good for today. Even what Jesus said 2,000 years ago is still good today. What an awesome God we have, amen. Today we want to come out of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we're going to go through verses 1 through 8. If you have it, say amen. If you don't, we want to know if you can stand and, and stand to the word of God and uh, reverence the word of God. I know Kaepernick says you can do some stuff, but we're talking about God now. Okay. And it says this. If I, if in the New Living Translation, he says, if I could speak all, all the languages of earth and of angels but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong and a clinging cymbal. Verse 2 says, and if I had the gifts of prophecy, and, and, and if I understood all of God's secrets, don't you know God got some secrets the world knows nothing about? He said, and possess all knowledge. And if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. Verse 3 says, he says, and if I gave everything I had to the poor, that's benevolence. And even sacrifice my body. I could boast and, and could boast about it. Paul says, I can boast about it. But if I didn't love others, it says, I would have gained nothing. Verse 4 defines love. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous and boastful and proud. Verse 5 says, all what? Are rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. Look here. And it keeps no record of being wronged. Okay, we can just about close the church down. It says it keeps no record about being wrong. It says in verse 6, it does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. And verse 7 says, love never gives up, never lose faith. It's always hopeful and endures through, through every circumstance. Love endures. Verse 8 says, prophecy and speaking in tongue unknown tongues and special knowledge will become useless but love will last forever tell your neighbor says neighbor God's love 
will last forever. The grass, the grass withered, the flower faded, but the word of God shall stand forever. Uh, you may be seated. I had a had an encounter with God on about a week ago, and God showed me some things, uh, and, and, and he woke me up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and he gave me a message. He told me that this ministry, that's somebody about to say this ministry, has to be built off of love. Okay, they, they ain't saying nothing, God. He said this ministry has to be built off of love to sustain what the enemy is trying to do here in this ministry. God says that we have to be, we have to activate the ministry of love. Uh, Dr. Sheldon told us on last, uh, last Friday that this church was known as Misfa, which means a watchtower. We're watching for those who are coming in. But while we're watching, we got we to gotta dose them with some love. Okay, that's why we don't get it. God said he warns, he warns them who come in to, to disrupt his order, his establishment. God said, I have built the foundation for the community, and it's going to be built off of love. God says, I want you to give a word to my people. He said, my people, you ain't my people. Okay, y'all still miss that, right? You are the sheep of God. He says to let them know that, that this is the last opportunity to repent. This will, Sunday marks the day of after that, he's not taking your repent. The day you will have to repent and turn from your wicked ways. God says, he says, I'm putting a mark in the sand. This day, he said, if you don't repent this day, God says, I'm going to cast my judgment on the household of God. God says here, he said, he said, I cast Lucifer out for the same exact thing. And he did not establish his church that the church can just do whatever they want to do. God says, I'm going to cast some judgment. He said, the LGBTQ community slogan is gay pride. But it's that same pride that got Lucifer kicked out. There's no God. We do not operate in pride. We operate in faith and love. And because we have failed to operate in faith and love, God says, I'm going to wrinkle out that, those, those wrinkles that's in the sheep that he's coming. I'm coming back for a sheep, a, a church without spot or wrinkle. I'm going to take the spot out. I'm going to iron the wrinkle out because I'm going to cast judgment on the household. See, everybody want a message, you're going to be a millionaire, but God don't always talk about making money. Sometimes he's just talking about cleaning yourself up. He said, I'm going to cast judgment on my house because I'm going to make the house a household of faith. The Old Testament God still reigns. The Old Testament God still is activated. Intercession is for the soul that those that, that don't repent, that God, even though you do whatever you do, please just save their souls. Huh? Uh, God, uh, Paul denounced and excommunicated members of the church of Corinth because a sin was living in the household of God. And the church was okay with the behaviors that was displayed. Okay, it's getting quiet right now, God. You must be really talking. Look, the church, the church motto in the church of Corinth was boys will just be boys. You know how it is, uh, ladies, when, when men do things, and they can get away. They can have 10 girlfriends, but if you got one, they call you the H word. Uh, but God said, this is not going to reign in his household. He said, he say, I'm the same God with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm the same God that reigns now. I will reign forevermore. He says here, the church, the, uh, the, the, that men just do what men do. But let me tell you something, that do not work for God. But God didn't establish a church for that purpose. He established a church that the kingdom will be here on earth. The church is established for saving souls, advancing the kingdom of God, and making disciples. All the other shenanigans got nothing to do with God's church. 1 Corinthians chapter... First Corinthians uh, 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 chapter five verse one talks about some things within church. Was, the church of Corinthian was some kind of church. It had all kind of stuff going on in the household. But one thing they wouldn't do, they wasn't activating by faith. <laughs> Just because the, the name on the side says church, don't mean church activity is going on. 
And, and because we have, I'm not just talking about you. I'm talking about generations on generations that has failed to walk in the fullness of God. And now we have grew up a generation that knows not God. And we say, why they won't come to church? Because they've been looking at Big Mama and Aunt Sookie and Grandpa doing some stuff that wasn't churchy. And, and now they have an art with God and the church because of your behavior. Look what he said. Paul says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, he says, I can hardly believe the report going on among you. Something even pagans don't do. I am telling that a man in your church, somebody say your church. Notice God didn't say his church. He said in your church is living in sin and with his stepmother. He was sleeping with the stepmother and the church knew about it and nobody didn't say nothing. Not even the preacher. That's the old boys will be born. The church was established, Paul established because he was an apostle. He establishes churches and he, he gets them and then he turns it over to the leader that will lead the people. But the leader failed to lead. He says, he, Paul established churches throughout Asia, Minor, and other parts of the world to receive the port of the news that, the, that one church that he established was doing some foul stuff in the church of Corinthians. And, and there was committing sexual immorality. Yeah. One of the highest things God hates is sexual immorality because it not only defiles you, defiles the other person, it defiles your own body. But, but we have put it up. We go to Vegas and we say, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. The, de the devil is a lie. What happened in Vegas that God hears about and he casts his judgment. So, so don't, don't think that's the end of it because you just in Vegas. Paul says that, that this individual was doing some things that even pagan does not do. Pagan is defined as an individual who does follow one, what he follow, he follows one of the world's main religion, but in other words, that, that he's, he follows the Bible, but only in certain parts. That's why, that's why we had to come to Bible study and ministerial training so I can teach you about these things because we go into church for a hallelujah. We want the music to make us shout, but the word is what's going to change your heart. The word is what, that's why folks don't want to come to church because they don't want the word to tell them nothing no more. We living in a society where people don't want to, don't want you to tell them nothing no more. But look what the scripture said. It says that pagan is, 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 is one of the worships of, of the oneness are, de, um, are described as a hedonistic, which means believers that believe in supreme divine principles, but, they, but they're not monotheistic. See, that's why you got to come to ministerial training so I can give you these, these words so you can understand. In other words, the heno, the heno theistic uh, religion believes in the feminist of God. That's why you'll hear them saying mother nature. But the Bible says God is Elohim, which is, 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 is masculine in his nature. That's why he's, he's, he doesn't concern us with being, when we transition, we'll be neither female nor female. But there is a movement saying that, that God is, 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 is a feminist. But the Bible says that, that, that the, the Bible says he's, he's, he's our Abba father. Somebody say Abba. Which means he's our daddy. My daddy wasn't a, wasn't a female. And, and he's not, he's, but he's not your mother. The Bible says we, we can call him Abba Father. Pagans who worship oneness are described as hedonistic, which means that they believe in the oneness. You'll hear this movement going on. That's H-E-N-O. I see some people writing. That's good. H-E-N-O-T-H-E-I-S-T-S. Hedonistic. -E Look it up for yourself. That's why I say come to church. You need to take some notes. Why? Because you need to know how the devil is cunningly trying to deceive you. They're going to be different religion, different denomination, different ways they're going to, and it's going to sound good, but it's ain't going to end up good. Henonistic means a person, a person who worship only one God, but this God doesn't have to be Elohim. Okay, uh, uh, you recognize, he, he, while well, he recognizes the existence and the potential uh, existence of other God, this person practiced henonisticism. He know comes from the Greek words mean devote to one but despise the other. Huh? Uh, 
Theistic means a person who believes in the existence of a god or gods, uh, 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 specifically of the creator who intervenes in the universe. We are believers of, of, the, of Christ who he says we believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that these three, how many is three? Three. <laughs> three in Spanish is what? Yes. Three in English is what? But it also means trinity. The world is in an uproar because uh, in religious they are in uproar because we say tr trinity is not in there. So is a Honda and a Chevrolet, but you drive them. So, so, so we have to understand the trinity, but, but, the, but, the, but the Bible says these three are what? Are one. Monotheism, one deity, one God, but three, three wrapped into one. We believe in three in one all, but we don't believe in God being all in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Look at Luke chapter 16, verse 13. Luke 16, verse 13. Look what it says. Look, no one can serve what? That's why you can't have two girlfriends or two boyfriends. No one can serve what? Two masters, for you will hate one and what? Love the other, or you will devote, which means you'll dedicate to one. And despise the other. God, you say, you cannot serve God. Look, look. And enslave to what? Enslave to money. In, in, the, in the King James, it says, it says mammon, which means money. It means to enslave means you have to be in prison, incarcerated. That's why the devil gets you in debt so you can't serve God. Oh, they missed that right there. That's why you have the credit card demon you're dealing with. So, so, so you got to work seven jobs to pay the debt off and never make it to Sunday on church because you in too much debt. Oh, that's a, they, they ain't going to want to see this this morning. Look, look. So, so, so you got you to gotta be a slave to the debt. The problem is not the card. The problem is the swiper of the card. We, we want to blame the devil, right? So, so, so what happens is you in so much debt that you in your ears. So now it not only affects your attendance church, it affects your tithe paying. So, so, so they say, will a man rob God? The answer is yes. yes. Why? Because you have a spending habit that we have not dealt with. And then we blame it on the devil. No, the devil just presented the, the advertisement to you and it, it, he knew you had a lustful spirit for certain items. Okay. He, he ain't going to advertise He ain't going to advertise no man to me and to my lust out because men don't do nothing for me. Hmm? But he'll put, a, he'll put a lady on you. Now you're going to Vegas and you're at the strip club with a bunch of ones. You're making it rain. Pastor ain't dumb. So when it comes time for you to, to bring your tithes to the household of God, you broke. Matter of fact, you called and asked for some gas money to come back. You not only robbed the house, now you want the house to fund your spending habit. So sometimes you just got to bite the bullet and learn a lesson in, your, in the stuff you've done wrong. See, the problem today is nobody wants to learn a lesson, right, for the stuff they did. But sometimes it's in the lesson where God will give you some acknowledge that he will be, teach you a lesson in why. I ain't going to never do that no more. But if you always get bailed out, you'll never learn. Sometimes we do that too much with our children. God wants to teach you some, teach him some lesson, but here you go, you bail them out. Now, God got to let you experience what he was trying to put on them. He got to put it on you. Now your way will dry up. That's why sometimes God got to let Big Mama go home. Big Mama was too many gods to too many people. Okay. It's okay to cook the Sunday dinner, but now I'm paying your bill. Yeah, that's a little too far right there. Sometimes, if you, if you want that car, save your money. Get a good career job. I didn't say get a career, not a job. Oh, they, they missed that right there, right? Some of y'all working at McDonald's is not a career. McDonald's is a starter job. Y'all trying to make him pay y'all more money. And what they do is they, they paid you 15, but now the, the, the rates went up, the, the mortgage went up, the car note went up, the registration went up. So it's just like you making six. Okay, y'all ain't gonna see that. <laughs> Look at verse 2 in, 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 in uh, Corinthians 13. Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2. He says, look, not just the man was proud, 
you, church, are so proud of yourself, but you should be mourning in sorrow and shame. And you should remove this man from what? Remove him from the fellowship. Because let me tell you something. He knows right from wrong. Huh? He knows what he's doing. Paul is talking to the church in his epistle or letter. He addresses the root of the problem. The root of the problem is just not the sexual immorality. The root of the problem is that it has spread from this man to the whole church. One bad apple will spoil the whole bunch. Sometimes you got to cut that thing out. And sometimes if it's been rotten too long, you got to throw the whole apple away. Paul says, while you see it, address it, and if it's not going to line up to repentance, you got to remove it. But the problem is, we let them have, think that they tithing controls the church. Because you have gotten into, see, that's, what's, that's the downside of mega, because you got mega bills. Okay. <laughs> you can't say nothing to those people, those congregants, because if you say something, I'm going to leave and I'm taking my tithe with me. I say, take you, your tithe, your shoes, your hat, your coat, your car, and get to stepping. That's why we can't let folks control the house. Uh, I'm a, I'll take my tithe. Take it. And let the canker worm get the rest of your substance. But we got to understand that, that we have bought because why? I got to make my $6,000 to, to pay my honorarium so I put up with the devil. The devil is a liar and a liar too. We don't, want to, we don't want to admonish because we're afraid of the reaction. But God is calling us today into repentance. The word God calls is, he said, he say, the word convicts you which leads you into repentance. I don't know about you, but I've done wrong before, and I, it, I, my stomach was upset. See, that, that, that maybe you ain't got enough God in you, but, but, but I had done some things, and I just didn't feel right. I was uneasy. Why? Because the word was chewing at my heart to make my mouth say, you know what? I repent, God, for those things that I knew wasn't right. And even for the things, sometimes I had to repent not knowing uh, that, I, that I didn't even do wrong. I say, for those things of omission and commission. God, those things that I don't know that I even offend you, I even repent of those things. But see, if we can ever get that kind of heart or that kind of mindset, God can work with you. That's why the church needs to be, folks need to be in the church. Why? Because so we can hear the word. First thing we say, oh, that message wasn't for me. Yes, it was. Now you're walking in denial and a liar. <laughs> so, so your best not even say nothing. So look what he said. He said, he said we need to repent. Uh, but since this man and this woman did not repent, and now it is spreading over the church. Let me show you how that will corrupt the church. Now the, the, your children's children begin to see that behavior, and now that becomes the norm. Okay. So now we got a whole generation. Now was only one man and one woman. Now we got 600 who are doing the same thing. Has infiltrated the church. Paul writes in this letter, he said, you should remove this type of man from your fellowship, which means excommunicate. See, we have not, we have not been excommunicating. We have been, we have been sucking folks in no matter what they do. I don't care how you live. You can be shacking. You can be, you can be doing all kinds of sinful things. We just going to tolerate it. The devil is a lie. So, so, but what happened is when Lil Ray Ray hears that behavior that goes on, so guess what? He comes in. He does the same thing or even worse that pagans don't even do. But God says here that, that remove him. Uh, and he said we cannot let sin reside in the church and not address it. But the apostle Paul says put them out. Now, uh, we're going to see in scripture where all these, I, I think it came from the jailhouse. That says, you can't judge me. This came from outside of the house. I know it couldn't have came from the body of believers. Because the word don't say that. Uh-oh. You, you hear that? Rat licking on ice is that quiet. See, 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 see. The reason why they're saying that, because people inside the house been saying that. Ain't been the Bible study. Or whoever was feeding you didn't give you correct information or doctrine. Look, look, the, the church, see, 
we say we just tolerate every behavior. That's not scripture. Hmm. When, when, when the behavior is bad enough, we should address it. Now, we're not going to address every little thing you do, but when it becomes an annoyance, you know, you know, you know your, your, when your light is on your car, at the while, it becomes an annoyance, you know. So especially because you're trying to get your registration, you know, you can't pass smog. Okay, I'm going to leave that answer. They would, rather, they would rather hear the gospel, but not adhere to the gospel. They would rather, uh, I say, I would rather be outside preaching on the corner than be in the house than letting that spirit control this ministry. I close the doors first and get me a megaphone and preach on every corner I stand on. Because it's not the building, it's the, it's the spirit and the man of God that preaches his word. It don't make no difference where I am. I'm going to preach the gospel. If I'm in South Asia, I'm going to preach the gospel. If I'm on Lancaster Boulevard, I'm going to preach the gospel. The gospel is within. But we have, we have submitted, laid down our mantles. Why? Because we wanted something. Never be in a situation where money is the factor. Look in verse 3. Paul says, even though I am not with you in person, I am with you what? In spirit. Paul was, he couldn't make it to, he couldn't make it to this ordeal, but Paul says, my spirit is with you. He say, and as though I was there, I have, look, I have, I have what? Already, Already what? Answered. On what? And verse 4 says what? In verse 4. Paul said, I already passed judgment. So why are we saying we can't judge folk? Huh? He said, I have already passed judgment. Paul called them out. In the letter, look what Paul says. And, though, and, and as though I was there, I already passed judgment in, in, in the name of the Lord Jesus. You ought to, you must call a meeting of the church. Look, and I will be present with you in what? And so will the power. That's where they can't do it. They ain't got the power of the Holy Ghost. They ain't got the power. They, they got the power of the, of the money di dollar. Let's raise another offering because I didn't meet quote my quota because that, that spending demon says I got to pay for that Mercedes. I got to pay for that Bentley. Okay, so that's why I drove a hoopty for years before I got me another car. Y'all don't know nothing about the hoopties, right? You ain't never had one of them God cars that it's been, it's just stuck together by God. The fender's hanging on, the, the, the radiator, the light's on. You got to crawl through the side window to get in, to get into the back seat. You only had a car like that. The window don't roll up. Everything in my car was manual. I was like, pull around. I can't reach over there. Y'all ain't never had, they ain't never had a car like that. You so they never had a car like that, right? But to, to, I had a car, it was all primer. I couldn't even afford to paint it. I said, hey man, he said, what color is it? It's gray today, but when it gets night, it's, it's silver. Y'all see, y'all, I'm, I'm with the rich crowd, so I got to talk a little bougier. Hold my finger like this. Look, and what God says, you know, he says, he says, while you're going through this process, you got to have the Holy Spirit, because you'll listen to their case, and you'll listen to them more than you'll listen to God. Paul took authority of the situation, not even being there, but in the letter that he wrote of the epistle. He said that I'm not there in person, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to support the church in the calling him out. But when we call folks out, the, the, the church gets mad. Let's get the benediction, right? He, he didn't have to do Ray Ray like that. He, he's a Christian. I know he smoked a little weed. and He got a girlfriend and babies all over town, but he's a good kid. And now you wonder why kids are popping up all over the church. Everybody look like the pastor. Okay, I'm going to leave that one alone too. Because nobody said nothing. You didn't speak up. That's what's wrong with the Catholic Church. Them babies burn under the church. But they're not supposed to marry, so where the baby's coming from? They might as well have married, they're having sex. But we say that you can't judge me. The Bible says don't judge, at least you be judged. Don't call them a whoremonger and you got 25 girlfriends. Hmm? So, so don't call them out. Hey, don't throw rocks. Living in a glass house. 
so to speak. Because them rocks do come back. Look, look. But, but he says you have all the spiritual rights to judge those. No, look, in the household of faith, them outside, God's going to judge them. But when you hang your, we hang your membership in here, it can be judged. Right? Maybe that's why they don't want to come. They don't want nobody to judge them. Look what he said. Paul says, I already, he said, I already, for Paul, for they had the meeting, Paul already judged him. Put him out. I don't even want to hear what he say. For such a de despicable thing that pagans don't even do. You know why, you know why uh, uh, pagans do it? Because they come to church, but they really don't believe the word of God. They believe several God. They, they believe the God of, you know, they believe the God that's on a thousand, cattle on a thousand hill, but they don't be the God that say stop sinning. See, we have made God a shrugged board that we grab what we like, but what we dislike, we want, we want, we, uh, that ain't for me. Yes, it's for everybody. But, but he say, you see, we live in a time where folks don't want to tolerate anything or pass judgment on the church. But the church needs to wake up up that's why the church got to start the reading the bible see it says it says study you got to read to study it says study to show thyself what a workman that need might be but what so because if you can rightly divide it you can wrongly divide it and 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 the devil's main job is not to make you his main job is to cause a split in the church between the, between the Levites and the laity. Between the, let, let me get, between the pastors and the congregants. So, 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 so you won't know what the split is about because you'll think it's, you try to morally figure out a godly uh, spiritual act. That's why the Bible says they that worship him has to worship him in what? Spirit and it, you can't receive spirituality unless you have a spiritual mind. That's why God had to use parables because they couldn't understand some heavenly thing because they had a carnal mind. And, they, and even his disciples came back who walked with Jesus. Jesus, what was you talking about? We don't even know what you're talking about. Jesus had to break it down to them because he knew their mind. They had not received the impartation of the Holy Spirit. That the day of Pentecost had not yet came. That's why he told them, he said, let this mind be in you that was what? Also in Christ didn't even have his own mind. That was the mind of Elohim in the Son. The question is, whose mind you got? Look what he said. He said, he said, a time is coming when they're not telling, but the church needs to wait. The word of God convicts us to, and it leads us into repentance. Now, I grew up, I knew right from wrong, cause, but I was more Baptist than I was saved. So, so, but so, so, so when I had my Damascus experience, uh, so to speak, God had to deliver me from everything, not only denominationalism, but denominations. Okay, that's why we get in the call. Question is, what denomination was Jesus? Mm, that's what I've been looking for that for about 50 years. Look what he said. He said, the word of God convicts us and it leads us into repentance. He says, be sober. Be vigilant. That means watchful. That's why we are the watchtower. He said, that's why, he said, that's why we have to be, we were called the misfa, which means we're the watchtower. We vigilantly, we're looking for those who are, are out of the household of faith and claiming to be Christians. Hmm? Not that I'm peeping in your window, but the stench of your sin walks in the house. See, a smoker can't hide from me because I can tell you smoking for because you know what? It's not only on you, it's in your hands, it's in your hair, it's in your clothes. When you walk by, I say smoked. Already knew. You, you can you can put all the fragrance on, you can put all the cologne on, you can put all the stuff. I said, mm -hmm. my nose is sensitive. So, but when you get in the love of God, you can tell a sinful nature from a righteous nature. A, a sinful nature don't want to quit. Why is the church giving the, the homeless community shout? Why are they passing the fruit, they, that food out to the homeless folk? Because you have a sinful nature still, not a righteous nature. A righteous nature want to see those fed. Why? So we can feed them food and yet feed them the word of God. They have been doubly fed. The word of God says that it leads, it leads us into repentance. And it says, it, says, it says because the adversary, the devil, 
as a roaring lion, walking about, it says, seeking whom he may what? That's why we cannot be drinking because it leads to you not being sober. It leads to you not making godly choices. Okay, it's going to get quiet in here, right? Somebody got some Seagram Seven already with the top of our pot. They just, they wouldn't go home. They already got a head. They got the cork on it. Story stuck in there. They, I'm going to leave it alone right there. <clears throat> see, 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 it, it, it's, it's in the day that they were drinking, they didn't have refrigeration. See, we see, see, they say a little wine, but y'all ain't drinking a little. Y'all drinking till the bottle's empty. And then somebody's making a beer run. Make a beer run for me, man. Go over and give me, bring the six pack over here. You know when you got that 24 pack, 24 pack, you, you was expecting to use all of it. Okay, let me get it quiet. Look, look. What happens is when, you, when you're drinking, you're not in your right mind. Look. Back in the days of Jesus, and you, if you've ever been in their third world countries, they have meat hanging up. Sometimes it's up for days. And it has flies on it who puts all kind of insects in uh, That's how my dog died because he, he ended up getting worms because he ate food that was left out for a while and the flies lit on and then it began to put maggots in him. So, so when you eat food like that, so they, they, they ate, the, they drunk the wine wow, to, to, to solve their stomachs from being upset. Your stomach ain't upset. You just want to satisfy your taste. I'm going to take the edge off. The edge off of what? Huh? I, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink because, you know, I'm watching the football. It makes me get into it more. Well, move the chair up. We, we got all the excuses just saying, you know what? I just don't want to let it go, Pastor. See, see, the thing about it is when you begin to drink, then it opens a portal for a demon of lust of spirit to come into you while you drink it. So that's why she say, you want to go, go in the bed? You're like, okay. Uh, I'll go in. We're going to go in there. We're going to start reading the Bible. Sure you are. <laughs> see, see, until you, until you uh, can understand, it's, the, it's the, the little leaven that leavens the whole lump. It's the little foxes that get you in trouble. See, see, that's why we have to understand. See, we got to look at the Bible in its totality. See, we just say, we say, yeah, it says you can drink a little bit, but you ain't in the third world country. Y'all got freezers, y'all got freezers. You go on your app, you can set the temperature from your app on TV, on, on your phone. That, 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 make it extra, put it at zero degrees. You don't need it like that no more. So, so, but now that we keep doing it, now just like, just like they passed a law on you can smoke marijuana. Mm. Get quiet here. Did I get the marijuana group? <laughs> hey, check their wallets, Deacon. See if they got any cards. They got medical marijuana cards. <laughs> look, look. You went, to, you, went to a, you went to a drug that, that makes, you, makes you think that you're okay, but you really ain't okay. Some, because they say, you know, you're dealing with mental illness. I got depression, Pastor. I'm going through some stuff. Did you go to Jesus? Mm. He, he's not an option. But, but you know, I, I heard, I, I heard marijuana was the gateway to other drugs. Hmm. They, 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 they just say they can't deal, do anything with the homeless because, you know, the drug issue, there's mental illness. But you passed a law on drugs, dummy. That's like a double negative. They, they passed a law to, to, to help them, and they say it's gotten worse. Anything you try to fix and exclude God will not work. I got the answer for them, but they ain't asking me. They spent billions of your tax dollars to try to solve something through a monetary issue. It will not work. Folks today, that's why they come to church, but they don't want to be convicted. I want to go to church that makes me feel good. I want to go to church that, that all, they, they, they shout. I call it doing the chicken wing. They, they got it down. Doing chicken. And to get outside and the devil just wrap you across your head. First phone call, you can't take it. You falling out in the parking lot. We got to call paramedics. Look. The word of God says, that, that his word convicts you to lead you to repentance. So God don't want you to stray away. And then if when you don't 
when you don't repeat penance, it leads you into damnation. It takes you into the abyss. That's hell. Hmm? That's rejecting. When you reject, when you reject one of God's words, you might as well reject all of them. Hmm? There's no getting around something. Well, you know, you know, we don't do that no more. Well, where does it say? First thing I say is, is where does it say that in the Bible? It. When you say we, uh, classify the we and in the Bible, show me where that's at. Look what he said. N nowhere, nowhere uh, 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 we're working. It makes you, when you begin to, to, to not be sober-minded. Sober-minded sober -minded is I study the word of God. I choose the word over my own thinking. Hmm? The reason Paul says and put uh, this individual out of the church is because sin was spreading throughout the household of faith. Sin spreads faster than cancer. One person can be in sin. Uh, we, we saw that in the scripture. Me and Deacon Andre was talking about uh, the man who stole something when they went out to take the spoil. And he hid it under his tent. Not only did it affect him, his whole family, not only him, all of his animals were killed and stoned and burnt up because of one man's sin. That's why if you don't stop it, it'll get on the praise team. It'll get on the deacon and deaconesses. It'll get on the ministerial board. It'll get on the, on the usher board. And then it'll get into the congregation where we are, we are looking for it to be seduced. Why? Because nobody said nothing. Somebody has to make a stand. Paul is saying, cut it out. Remove it. Extract it from the household of faith. One bad apple spoils the whole church. It, 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 I hear preachers that do some things, sleeping with the secretary, sleeping with people in the church. They don't say the church. They say, they say, oh, that hope, that pastor, they call your name first. When you do something, you know what they say? Oh, Pastor Jones Church, they something else over there. They never say that. That's a rascal over there. But they point out the man of God. Look, look Paul says that we have to judge them in the name of Jesus our Lord. He says that we must call a meeting. And Paul says that, that we have to, to let the spirit of God make the final call. Huh? See, we say, well, man, she sure can sing. Let me tell you something. Some of the best musicians are the most sinful musicians. Some of the best singers can sing you on the table. You're like, ooh, that was anointed. No, you just got, you got, you just got slain by a spirit of sinful nature. Because it made you remind you of something. I'd be like, she can sing, but no anointing. Prettiness don't please God. It's the anointing. It's the righteousness of God. Look at verse 4. What Paul said. Paul said, then you, you ought to. He said, what? You must what? Throw this man out and hand him over to who? Verse 5. I'm sorry. Y'all know what I meant. Like my mom would say, you know what I meant. She called me on brother name. She said, Marvin. I said, I'm Dwayne. She said, you know what I meant, boy. Y'all mama didn't talk to y'all crazy. He said, you ought to. You must throw this man out and hand him over. That sounds cruel. He says, hand him over to Satan so that his sinful nature, the flesh, will be destroyed. And he himself will be saved on the day of the Lord's return. When they just won't stop, God says, put him out. Turn them over to Satan. But the intercessors in the house need to be praying that God save his soul. Even on the, before Satan kills him, that he say, Lord, I repent. But his body, his sinful nature will be destroyed. See, but we have gotten attached to the sinful nature. Because we have letting it spread. Three things that happen here. Sin, sin is being uprooted out of the church. In order that it does not spread throughout the body. Sin has to be cut out or plucked out. Huh? That, that's, that's why he said that, that if you lust with your eyes, it's better to pluck your eyes out to save the rest of you. If your hands can't quit stealing, cut them off. Huh? Sounds brutal, but, but it's to save the best part of you. See, we don't, we don't look at it like that. we like, well, I'm only doing a little something. A little something is still sin. A little rejection is still rejection. A little, a little rebellion is still rebellion. And then it said that it says in um, the second thing, uh, pride is being plucked out of the body. Pride always comes before what? 
the fall. Pride is always before they fall. You hear people say, huh, I can't tell me what to do. That's pride talking. When, when, when they know more than their mama, and their mama been here 70, 80 years, and I still know more than my mama. My mama has on me what we call experience. You can't buy experience. That's why your kids say, oh, mama, you old school. You don't know nothing. I say, if you know that much, the bills is waiting on you. They don't care who pay it. Show, show, me, show me your experience and go how to make some money. Oh, mama, show y'all right now. <laughs> you know, I love you, mama. I'm just talking out of my head. I, show, I know you would. Because I was going to not cook either. <laughs> Look what he said. And the third thing is, the man is being saved by handing him over to Satan. Because Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. God says, let Satan destroy his body. Because his body ain't going to never be saved. Don't you know our bodies ain't going to never be saved? But God says that he, can, that he on the day of his return, his great good enough. It's a possibility that, that he may repent before he transition. Some people won't transition. Some people won't repent until a Satan oppress you to repent. Repent. Sa Satan got to take you do some stuff. He, he, he got to strip you of all you had. He, he got to do you like Joe. He got to take all your stuff and all your family. He got to strip you down to bear nothing. For, for some people to say, oh, God. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself, whither shall I go? The church and the intercessor, but the church ain't praying. Hmm. We only got three days, but what happened to the other four we in? Well, I should be able to call. I need to call the intercessor. The devil is attacking. So we praying, if the person don't repent, we praying that God saves his soul. Look at verse 6. Paul says, you're boasting about this is what? Terrible. Terrible. Look, don't you realize that this sin is like a little, lev little um, yeast that spreads throughout what? The whole batch of dough. Now, he ain't calling you fat, so get that out your mind. <laughs> dough is, when you make dough without yeast, the yeast makes it rise. Without the yeast, he's saying that you won't, you won't be shaped to, to, to pride. You know, some people, once, once you get two, more, two or three amens, we think that we somebody. You know, like in sports, when you, you make the final bucket of the game and you win, everybody patting you on your back, carrying you on your shoulder, you think you the hero, but you forgot about them other players who help you. Hmm? So, so, so the yeast represents pride. The dough represents that I can put you in a substance, in a cake, in a pan, and then when I put you in the oven, that you'll come out and you're edible. So edible is represented of God can use you. Old bread is represented God can use you. You already set and you mold it. So you're not good for anything. God says, God says that, 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 you, that the little yeast won't be in you So just for the whole batch of dough. Look in, look in the next um, passage. Verse 8. Paul says what? Get rid of what? No, 7, I'm sorry. Get rid of the old yeast by removing the wicked person from among you. Then you will be what? Like a fresh bat. Somebody say a fresh bat. You, you ever smell dough? How, I mean, it, even before you cook it, it's like, oh, you almost want, almost, I don't know, some of y'all may have, but you almost want to eat it, right? And, it, and, 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 and when it's in that form, it's easily molded. You, you can twist it, you can turn it, you can stretch it, but once it becomes bread, that's over with. So that's why he said you'll be like fresh batch of dough made without yeast, without pride. It says, which is what you really are. To tell your neighbor, that's what you really are. Don't call him a dough boy, a dough girl. <laughs> Just say that's what you really are. Look what he said. He said, Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us, for you to be like that dough. Huh. <laughs> look, look. Look, look, that's why he says you have to be transformed to the dough so he can mold you like the potter on the wheel and put you in the oven and you come out like a fresh loaf of bread. Now the world wants to eat what you got. The reason he don't, the world don't want to eat is we eat old bread. Mm. You said they didn't get that, man. Only me and you caught that. You got that, brother? Okay. 
So, so, so that's why we can't treat people like other, well, over the other church, and this is how they do this. No, no, no. Are you new bread or are you old bread? Next time they say something, don't call them out their name. Don't cuss and say, you new bread? Oh, you must be old bread. Because <laughs> old bread has mold. Mold is very contagious. One thing about when mold gets in the area, it has to be, it has to be treated. That's why when, you, when you're old and moly, God's got to break you down to the lowest denominator. He has to put you back in the fire. Why? Because he's trying to get all those impurities out of you. See, when mold comes in, you have to do two things. You have to cut it out or you got to burn it out. The burning out means you got to go to get hell to get it out of you, but you already in there, so you ain't getting it out. So, so God wants to use you while you're a fresh batch of dough. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor. I'm a fresh batch of dough so God can use me. Put me in his husband, oven. Look, 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 look. While you're in the oven, those are the trials that you're going through. So, so, so while you in your wilderness experience, God got you in the oven because he's trying to heat you up to 350 degrees because he's trying to formulate you to be used in a situation. Oh, my goodness. That's why we can't work in pride and jealousy. I don't want T.D. Jakes anointing. I don't want his gift because come with him, come devils what T.D. Jakes got attached to him. So you, you think you want my anointing, but there come some devils that come along with it. But are you strong enough for the devils that come along with the gifting that you'll be asking for? Hmm? But when you stay like, when you stay like a fresh, fresh dough, that God, God will mold you for the assignment that you're on. Look, he says in, in the last verse. So that you can be edible. Huh? Oh, taste and see. <laughs> That's fresh dough right there. That's right. That the Lord, I'm not good. That the Lord is good. And his mercies <laughs> endure forever. Can God taste of you? Can someone who's looking for Christ taste of you or they taste more of denominationalism than they taste of Jesus? Look what he says in the last verse. So let your, let us celebrate. Can we celebrate? Celebrate the festival not with the old bread of wickedness and evil, but with the new bread. <laughs> That's why they call Jesus bread of heaven. Bread of heaven, feed me till I won't no more. Look what he said. He said, but, but with the new bread of sincerity and truth. If somebody going to say, Pastor John, what's all this got to do with the love chapter? We'll go there and I'm going to tie it all in. 1 Corinthians 13, 1. Look what it said. It says, and if you speak all the length. Did you know on earth there's over 6,000 length? If you can speak every last one of them. And, and of angels, the prophetic word, he says, but did not love because you ain't no fresh bread. You old bread. He said, if you didn't do that, love others, you would only be a noisy gong. You, know, you just have a show called The Gong Show. Y'all, y'all, young folks, y'all look at me. Gong, what is a gong? Anybody remember that? Okay, y'all, y'all tell them about that when they go in the foyer. He said, do is it gone and the clinging symbols. Uh, them symbols. Hit them little symbols for me right quick on the dot. 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 <laughs> hit, hit them symbols for me one time. That was a little, with the, with the stick on it. <laughs> you go ahead, dot. That's what you'll sound like. Who understood that? Nobody. <laughs> Talking loud and saying nothing. So, so it says, it says, that's what you sound, verse 2. And if you had the gift of prophecy, the prophetic, he says, and, 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 and what did he say? And all the understanding of all God, don't you know God's got secrets, but he gives them to certain people? Ain't nobody got them all. I hear some preachers say, you know, uh, I talk with God all the time, Doc, and I know every secret God got. I say, now nah, he's a liar. <laughs> Look what he says. But have all the secrets, what? God's secret plans and possess all the knowledge or wisdom. It, it said, if, if I had such faith that could move mountains, look, but did not love others, bread, I would be nothing. Hmm? 
But all you do, it's got to be done in love. Next verse. Because, next verse. If I gave everything I had to the poor, that's benevolence. We don't even talk about that no more because I ain't giving no money to nobody. He driving a new car. Maybe that's why he ain't got no money. That car no eating him up. But you, but the, 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 the new bread you got, you can't see that, right? Because you, you're mad. His car look better than yours. I'm, I'm not giving him nothing. Wrong loaf of bread. Maybe, maybe God wants you to give him something so he can come here and get the word and say, you know what? I've been, I've been attacked by that, that spending demon. So you know what I'm doing? I'm going to trade this car in and get something downside so I can get the, but, but because you can't see that. Hmm. That's because you haven't become a fresh batch of dough. Look what he says. He says, he said, if I have everything and did not give, have to get the poor and sacrifice my body, that means where are you being used at? Hmm? Where, where is God using you in the ministry? Oh, well, they already got people doing that, but where are you at? Oh, they, it seems like, it seems like, right, but, but you ain't coming here to be a part of the, see, you are a, you are a, you're not a participator, you have become a spectator. Spectators are in the stands, but the participators are on the field. So what field are you on and what stands are you on? Look what he says. He says, he says, he says, but if I didn't love others, I would have gained. The Bible says, what, what is good for the for gain the whole world and lose? Some point, man, I, I can just be a millionaire. <laughs> yeah, don't you know we got millionaire demons too? Billionaire demons. Some of y'all still down in the 300 demons, y'all. Y'all ain't got the y'all with the thousand and three thousand range of demons. Those are called imps. <laughs> But when you get to those million dollars, you're dealing with principalities, rulers of darkness in high places. And you ain't, God don't give you that money. That's why y'all been taking all your tithe money trying to win the lotto. But God won't let you win because he don't want you to have to be attached to those demons of high ranking. Oh, y'all ain't going to hear me on today. And she winning. And then she done lost her mind. Last you saw was a tail, tail lights heading off to Vegas, and you ain't heard no more from her because them demons just run her crazy. Don't you know more people win the lotto are broker and, and broker? Is that a word? But anyway, this is my word. But they are, they are, they are, they are, they have, they're in worse shape than they was before they won because you haven't learned how to manage. You haven't learned how to c control the money. God wants you to, he desires you to have it, but what's hindering you is you. Look what he says. Next verse. Verse 4. Love is, and love is why. Don't you know God was patient with me? He had the legal right to kill me. Because I said I was done with y'all. No, I was. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. I was done with the church. I was done with the church because I saw all the antics of church people. Huh? I, I was watching you. I, forget, I forgot to quit, keep watching Christ. Peter had the gumption. He said, he said, Jesus, forbid me to come to you. And Jesus said, come. But nobody else asked to get out. At least I gave him credit for that. But when he got out the boat, the Bible says that he began to walk on water. He defied all of the natural laws of physics. He walked and walked, but then again, when he was walking to Jesus, he took his eyes off and began to see the white caps and began to see the water beating against the boat. He began to look at, and he didn't keep his focus on Christ. And the Bible says he began to sink. Hmm? Some of us are sinking because we ain't keeping our eyes on the prize. Look, 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 look. When you take your eyes off of God, guess what? Anything liable to happen to you. And but 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 he he reached to, he called out to Jesus. He said, Jesus, save me. And the Bible said he reached down, pulled him back up, and put him back in the boat. Why? So that he can get another boat experience. Huh? Sometimes we get in trouble. We say, God, I don't want never want that to happen no more. I, I failed that test. No, God, bring that test back again. But this time, I'm going to be equipped to handle it. 
Okay. That's why sometimes you, when you ain't strong in an area, don't hang out with Ray Ray. You know what Ray Ray going to do when it gets 12 o'clock. You know how Ray Ray going to act. You know what? You know how when him and Skeeter get together, they're going to do some crazy stuff. When it's midnight, they, it's, it's, it's going to be on and cracking. Here you can your Bible out there. I'm going to stand in the name of Jesus. You puffing too. See, we, we, you got to know your own self. But since we have been lying to us for so long, I'm a powerful man of God. Yeah, in a certain situation on Sunday morning between 1130 and 2, you strong. But after that, when that devil say, when that devil tells you, just, you pass by the store, the liquor store, ain't nobody going to see you. Pastor Jones don't even go that way. And here goes Sister Lanita. She got to go in there for some toothpicks and here you in the wine second, which says spirits. Then you come in the household of God, want to lay hands on me, get your hands off me. Hmm? And, and then you're going to go, you, don't you think, don't you think uh, those folks outside this door who are homeless can't, care, can't tell the spirit you carry? Hmm, okay. Some of them will get in the area. They already see the demon coming before you even see it. We're supposed, to, we're supposed to be able to recognize. God says, I gave you a spirit of discernment. In that, in that vision God gave me in my dream, God told me he was going to establish me with an apostolic anointing. That I'm going to cause you to establish this church. But first, I'm going to cause you to establish order. Okay, that's what you need to hear me. So, but the order has to be in the house first. Look what he said. Next verse. He said, oh, Ruth, love is not rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritated. Here you go. You are my last nerve. Hmm? That's irritation. <laughs> you say that one more time, I'm going to knock your teeth out because you have irritated me. You're not talking in love. You're talking out of your flesh. Hmm? Look what he said. He said, and, somebody say and. And is a conjunction word. Y'all ain't know it's coming in your class. It's a conjunction. It, 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 it brings two sentences or two parts of a sentence together. He say, not only you irritate, but you don't, keep, you don't keep no record of being. You remember in 1946? When you said to me about, you know, I ain't good. And God says, it don't keep no record of being wronged. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Not that you didn't do wrong. Not that they didn't do wrong to you. You just don't keep a record of it. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so when you got a whole list of what they did for me, back now, I, I, I say, God, I forgive my mama and daddy for all the things that they didn't do, that, that, I, that they could have done. I just thank you, God, that they led me to you. And I forgive them. So, see, see we, we, some of us become, that's why Jesus said, I'm going to make fishermen because we like to fish that old stuff back. Bring it back. Bring it back to me. Why? Because I want to show you how bad you done hurt me. That's why I had to cut you like that. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to cut you though, but you know, but that thing was irritating me. It was bothering me. And, 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 and then you justify instead of making it make you convicted to come to repentance. And you stuck there. So now God got to deal with you. Next verse. It does not it does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices even whenever the truth wins. Look, I'm glad they threw uh, them police in prison. Uh oh. See, you 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 want you want people to be punished, but you ain't praying for their souls. I hope they get the electric chair. I, I ain't saying that, cause guess what? I should have had the electric chair at one time. You know, I ain't got y'all. Y'all can tell y'all, y'all Sunday school people. Y'all ain't never stepped outside. Y'all ain't never did nothing no more. Right? They ain't never done. Me and you says the only one they ever done something, right? It's different between some of y'all and 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 the, and the ones in jail. Y'all just ain't got caught yet, <laughs> huh? But we so apt to pass judgment on people. That's why when folks come here from community service, I said I don't really know want to know what you done. Why? Because it ain't really ain't my business. My job is to get you. To understand that you need Jesus right now. Hmm? He's the heart fixer. He's the mind regulator. He's the great high priest. He's the judge. 
And when he's my defense attorney, they can't even win in the courthouse. Because next thing they say, we can't even find your paperwork. So what is the paperwork? We got to let him go. We had him come here, and guess what? They went to the court. They wiped all the stuff out. Okay, y'all ain't going to believe no stuff like that. Next verse. Love never, hmm, love never gives up. Huh? If I, I told you how many times I say I'm going to quit, but I said, you know, I ain't never coming back to that church. I'm done with you people until you really said that. God will let you experience what love is. Because you know why? I'm looking at unlovable people trying to judge love on people. Mm. You know, sometimes we say it in our marriages. We say it to our kids, you know. Hey, you, I wish you wouldn't have even been here. I know my kids done told me that. <laughs> you know, they say some stuff like that. I say, you know what? But I still love you. He, you just mad right now. <laughs> Calm down. I still ain't giving you $2,000. I love you, boy. <laughs> he, must have, he thought that was going to make me say, okay, son, I'm, I'm going to have to pay you so you can figure I love you. I still ain't going to give you no money, but I love you. I say, I say, find something a little more that gets to me a little bit better. That ain't. Okay, y'all, y'all kids do y'all different. Y'all, y'all fall this stuff. Mine are trying, mine tried everything under the sun. I say, he said, you're you just so hard. I said, I'm not hard. I still love you. Money is not attached to money. Some of y'all buying love, looking for love in all the wrong places. I like a little country too. But y'all trying to, y'all, that's why, that's why some of y'all have been hooked up with some no good for nothing thugs think looking for love and you think all you got is a baby daddy. And then when your boy ass come along, you got all the big, I want to see my kid. You ain't saw him in 16 years. Because he saw you with somebody treating you nice. Okay, let me get on here because they gonna, I see a rock coming at my head right now. All right, I'm going to go, in, go get my football helmet in there. Somebody go get my helmet. Me, I, got a, I know you got a hard hat in your car, don't you? You said you got a hard hat. You say, no, no hard hat, no kind of thing, nothing to put me, extra cushion, nothing to put me. Okay, all right. Come on. Yeah, give, me, give me that ram cap. It says, it's ram strong. Come on, let me see. If I get knocked out, oh, we'll talk about that later, Doc. Look what he said. He said, it is, it never loses faith. Love. God wants to, God is trying to prune you in a place where you never lose faith. Look, it's always hopeful and endures through every, if you have, let me tell you something. They're, they're talking about Russia may, may let off the nuclear plant plants. They may start shooting some nuclear weapons. and they But love is more powerful than a nuclear weapon. Yes, it is. Hmm? Don't you? They thought they was going to walk into Ukraine. They say, it'll be over in 48 hours as soon as we take this. They still, they, they underestimate love. Yes. Okay. I saw some of the people, the Ukrainians were still in church singing and praying. Why? C- praying and crying out to the great love who is God himself. For God so loved the world. It don't make a difference how big your enemy is. Love lifted me. See, if you can, sometimes you can win somebody over just by loving them into submission. Let me tell you something. This don't work. It don't work. Because you're going to find somebody who can do this a little better than you. They, they talk, so you might as well practice falling down and getting up. But, but you, you can diffuse some situation by, by, by dosing it with love. Yeah, I know. I, I, I did you wrong, man, but I love you, man. I'm so, I apologize. I'm sorry. Sometimes you may have not even did nothing wrong, but you put love on top of it. Love don't make excuses. See, you can, you can win him over. And you say, I love you so much, man. And then you know what? Can, I, can we go to lunch tomorrow? Can, 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 I, can I send something over to your house? Can, hey, 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 Sunday I'm going to church. You know, don't bring your car. I'll pick you up. Well, maybe I'm talking to the wrong crowd. It got, it got rat licking on ice quiet again. So when you begin to use the love on a situation, the Bible said that you'll grain a friend. But you got to first show yourself friendly. The problem is that we don't, we'll, accept, we'll accept friendship on Facebook, but we won't accept friendship that's not in your circle. I know we used to sing a song, with the circle be unbroken. If you can't show love, it's already broken. He said, love endures through every, well, how many is every? 
all. Every circumstance you in, if you ain't putting love in it, there's a great chance you ain't going to lose. You ain't going to win, I mean. We got to put love in it, right? Next verse, last one. Prophecy and speaking in unknown tongues, and, and it says, and with special knowledge will become what? In the King James, it's a in. Because you ain't going to need prophecy and, and unknown tongues when we're on, in the Jerusalem. Because we don't need a prophetic word. We got Jesus with us. Hmm? We got Elohim with us. The Holy Spirit is with us. So I don't need no word. I don't need prophecy in the New Jerusalem. Because it's going to end after our transition. I don't need to speak in tongues. I ain't got to speak in tongues over there. Why? Because I'm already with Jesus. What am, I, what am I prophetically saying? Because I won't need it when I transition. He say, but love is on this side of heaven and love will be on the other side of heaven. <laughs> love, what it say, will last forever. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. Love will last forever. If we can, sometimes you got to even love on the judge. Judge, I know you're about to sentence me, but you know what? Don't worry about it. I know you got to do your job. I still love you. Okay, I ain't never heard no. I ain't never heard nobody get in a case that said nothing like that. You know what the judge say? Let me knock five years off that. Okay, see, no. See, <laughs> see you know what we say is, I ain't gonna do it. You right? You're gonna take the whole twenty-five years. Then. <laughs> you know? I'd rather have twenty years on my books and then I get off in six. See, uh, Andre, uh, t talk with Andre later about that. You know, he can take. See, when we put love in every situation, love always wins every circumstances. Hmm. Love will never fail. God has never lost the battle. <laughs> love has never. Look, your mama went home, but God really didn't lose. He gained her. Okay, so <laughs> see, God wants to teach us how to love. Amen. And, and the church is built up of love so we can come in. There's some people come here, what we call roughnecks. We, we, we call some people coming here, they, they, they're tyrants. They, they, they got some certain things wrong with them. But you know, we can transfer all that if we begin to display love in it. You know, we say, hey, come on in the church. Okay, have a seat. I ain't sitting now. I'm going to sit where I want to. I know you are, but you know, the pastor say, you know, but who, I, you don't know who I am. You don't know who I be. That's all. I know, you know, you, you, you're a great person, but, but can you just say we have some protocol in our, but see, when you start saying, your neck started working like this too, they neck working, I'm like, uh-oh, <laughs> let's go to half time. <laughs> That's why as a pastor, I got to know who has certain amount of love so I can put them in certain situations. I can't put somebody who's ready to throw, hey, I'm going to make you come to Jesus today. No, no, you, you can't work with the motherboard. Because <laughs> some of the mothers, are, some of the mothers still got switchblades in their stockings. Then I'm here about to say, I'm going to say, Lord, stop the bleeding. <laughs> Mother sook it to kill another one. So, so we got we to gotta know how to display love. And when you have to learn to display love, <laughs> God gives you somebody who irritates you. <laughs> he gives you somebody who gets on your last nerve. He, he gives you somebody that's going to get under your skin and under your shoes and through them corns and bunions. And don't start, to, don't start saying, oh, I operate in love. God said, yeah, we finna find out right now. <laughs> Remember Peter told Jesus, he said, I'll go with you. Jesus said, you can't go with me. He said, I promise. He said, before the cock crows uh, three times, you're going to do what? Deny me. See, don't never talk God what you're going to do because he's going to give you your circumstances to just show you where you at. We're talking about, I, I, I'm great and I can do all things. Okay, okay we're going to find out right now. <laughs> Jesus said, we're going to find out right now. And so, you know, on the Richter scale of faith, where you at? You never know. God is always showing you where you are. When you got a problem, he's just showing you you ain't there yet. Huh? It's nothing wrong not knowing where you are. The worst is not wanting to know where you are. Huh? Or don't see where you are. All that is done in love. God had to get that man out of the church because it was going to affect his love, his spot without a wrinkle. So God said to iron it out. I got to get some out. Why? Because they're going to make some folks miss. 
because they ain't strong enough. They not word enough. They don't have vision and discernment enough. So instead of destroying the church, I destroy the one who's trying to destroy the people. That's how it all ties in together. For God is love. Give the Lord a hand, praise him.